Hello, welcome or welcome back to IB Biology. Um, I'm just here to remind you again that I am a student, so I have no credentials, but my notes are still trustworthy, I think. Um, <laughs> okay, no, they are trustworthy. I have read the official book and I took these notes from my teacher and I rewrote them here in a summarized way. So let's get into it. So now we're in 1.2, the ultra structure of a cell. So first things first, the ultra structure refers to uh, the structure that can only be seen from a high magnification. So that would be using a microscope. And I just wanted to inform you that in my video for 1.1, .1, I added the part about the microscope and that is actually supposed to be in 1.2 but it's not, it's in 1.1. Um, so sorry about that, but I'm sure we'll survive. So there are different cell types. The two main cell types, or the two cell types are prokaryotic cells and eukaryotic cells. So for prokaryotic cells, it's basically just means cells with no nucleus. It is bacteria, usually very simple. And there are two types. There's eubacteria, which is like normal bacteria, the, the daily bacteria, you know, that casual bacteria, <laughs> of course. And then there's archons. Archons. Archons? Again, I don't know how to pronounce things. Which is basically the first type of cell to ever exist. And it's simple, and it can only be found in extreme environments. So the second type of cell is eukaryotic cells. So there are very many different types of eukaryotic cells, and this just means with nucleus, like the cell has a nucleus. Um, and we'll get into what all the different parts of the cells are very soon. So the different types are plant cells, animal cells, fungi cells, and protists cells. I'm sure you've heard of the other ones before, but a protist cell is basically a eukaryotic unicellular organism that is not a plant or an animal or a fungal cell. Now we are going to go through how to draw the different types of cells, specifically a prokaryotic cell, eukaryotic cell, and a plant cell. So I'm going to start with prokaryotic, since this is the most simple. And something important to know about uh, prokaryotic versus eukaryotic cells is that they do not have... Um, prokaryotic cells are not compartmentalized, meanwhile eukaryotic cells are, and that means that the different components are separated and everything isn't just floating around in the cytoplasm. In this next part I will be labeling a lot of things and talking a lot but not writing that much, and so I'm just reminding you now that after this slide there will be a slide where all of this information is written, so if you want to pause and and write it down, you can. So the pili, the pili is is transfer, transferred to the next. The plasma membrane, it controls transport in and out of the cell. The cell wall, um, for a prokaryote, um, is made out of peptidoglycan and it protects the shape and protects the cell from bursting and from damage. The slime capsule is used to prevent the cell from drying out and to protect the cell from phagocytosis, which is essentially when cytis, phagocytis, I think it's called, um, engulfs the, a cell, essentially the, another cell is, eats the other cell, and you don't want this, obviously. As you can see here, I'm adding in lines in the cell wall in the slime capsule. This is to show thickness, because I forgot to do that in the initial drawing. The cytoplasm is a liquid component, and it's the site of chemical reactions. The flagella is used for movement. Ribosomes 
are used for protein synthesis. In, prokaryo in prokaryotes, there are 70 S ribosomes. You have to remember that. Plasmids are DNA fragments, and the nucleoid is the region where the DNA can be found in a prokaryotic cell. The circular naked DNA refers to, well, of course, DNA, but also the naked per part refers to not being attached to proteins. So in prokaryotic cells, the DNA is not attached to a protein. Meanwhile, in eukaryotic cells, they are. These proteins are called histones. And prokaryotic cells can be anywhere from 1 micrometer to 10 micrometers small. I was going to say large, but that is very, very tiny. So I have now written a little summary. We're going to have to pause to write it down. Hopefully it's not too fast. I mean, you're definitely going to have to pause. But here they are, just scrolling up the screen. Yes. Woohoo. Hmm. I'm using iMovie, as you can tell, probably, and I don't know how to just write it on the screen, so you're getting this weird thing. Yay, it's over. Woohoo. Now on to drawing and labeling a eukaryotic cell. This is specifically a pancreatic cell. So you can find it in your pancreas. Fun. Um, so, the Golgi apparatus it receives proteins from RER, which is the rough endoplasmic reticulum, and modifies and repacks them for secretion. The centrioles are used for cell division. So, there are four things that make up the nucleus. These things are the nuclear envelope, the nuclear pores, the nucleolus, and the DNA. And all of that together is the nucleus. There are lysosomes, which are digestive enzymes that break down worn out cells or worn out cell parts or particles. Mitochondria, as you all know, is called the powerhouse of the cell, but what it actually is, well, I mean, it, it is that, but another way to say that is it's the site for cell respiration. ADS ribosomes, it's, again, the ribosomes are used to synthesize proteins, it's just this time they're ADS. The S stands for Svedberg, you don't have to know this, but Svedberg, and it's about the speed at which the molecules move. The rough endoplasmic reticulum uh, do protein synthesis and transportation, so they transport those proteins. And you don't really need to know this, but those things next to the Golgi apparatus are secretory vesicles and a eukaryotic cell can be anywhere from 10 micrometers to 100 micrometers, which is not big either, but a lot bigger than the prokaryotic cells. I am sure you heard my cat in the background. Thank you. Um, so I have again made a slide where I wrote down all the important parts. If you have to pause it again, I couldn't get rid of the title. Um, oops. Also, if I didn't mention something that was labeled in the diagram, it's because I've already mentioned it in the prokaryotic cell. For example, the cytoplasm and stuff like that, they all ha they have the same function in different types of cells, so that's why I did not write them down again. Now we're drawing the plant cell. I will be doing the same process as before, so I will explain and then write down. So the cell wall. So the cell wall in a plant cell is a little different from the cell wall in a prokaryotic cell. In a plant cell, it's made out of cellulose and makes sure that the plant stays erect and prevents excessive water uptake. This is the large central vascule. The plasma membrane, uh, again, controls transport in and out of the cell. 
And I wrote Cell Wall again for some reason. Weird. Um, the nucleus, which holds the DNA. The rough endoplasmic reticulum, which again does protein synthesis and transports those proteins. This is something new. This is a chloroplast. Chloroplast is a site of photosynthesis. There are also some random starch grains floating around in plant cells, which are for energy storage. Um, there's mitochondria, the site of cell respiration, ADS ribosomes. Again, a plant cell is a eukaryotic cell, so a lot of the things are similar to the eukaryotic. The cytoplasm, liquid component, site of chemical reactions. The Golgi apparatus receives proteins from the RER, rough endoplasmic reticulum, modifies and repacks them for secretion. That is it for the plant cell, but there are some differences you have to know between the eukaryotic animal cell and the plant cell. So a difference is that animal cells have no cell wall, meanwhile plant cells do. Animal cells have small vascules, meanwhile plant cells have large vascules. Um, animal cells have lysosomes, plant cells don't. Animal cells don't have chloroplasts, plant cells do. Animal cells have centrioles, plant cells don't. Uh, animal cells use glycogen, glycogen as a nutrient storage. Meanwhile, plant cells use, use, use starch as a nutrient storage. The next part of this chapter is about binary fusion. Sorry, I meant binary fission, not fusion. This is an asexual way to reproduce, and all prokaryotic cells partake in this. So it happens three times per hour, and essentially the DNA replicates within the cell, then the cell elongates, and then at the end, they, you end up with two identical daughter cells. Deducing the function of specialized cells. So as you can see, this cell is very interesting. It has a weird surface area. This is called a microvilli. It increases surface area of cell absorption. Its function is nutrient absorption in the intestine and kidneys. You can see this by the weird ridges. If we analyze the next cell here, this next specialized cell, you can see lots of RER, lots of Golgi apparatus, lots of ribosomes, well, actually, I did not draw them in there, but let's pretend that there are lots of ribosomes. There's mitochondria and secretory vesicles, which leads us to believe that the function of the cell is protein production, since Golgi apparatus, ribosomes, RER, all of this stuff are very useful when it comes to protein synthesis. So, Surprisingly, that was it for 1.2 ultrastructure of, a, of cells. Um, feel free to subscribe if you need help with or want to watch these videos for biology. And I will also be uploading business management, psychology, and math. I do take English and Swedish, A, language and literature as well, but I don't think anyone wants to see that, so... Mm -hmm. But feel free to subscribe, like, comment. Comment if you want that. I don't know. And you can follow me at um, Johanna Frenert on Instagram. Thank you for listening. Hopefully this helped. Goodbye. I hope you have a wonderful day. Toodaloo.